is not prepared to put politics aside, and they ought to. I call Dr Cam Calder. Thank you, Mr Chairman. It's a pleasure to rise and speak on the alkali uh, reform bill, which this order, government... Point of order, um, Kevin Haig. Point of order, Mr Chair, and I apologise to, to my colleague for interrupting his speaking time. I want to raise with you, sir, your ruling about allocation of calls in this debate. I think you are aware, sir, that this is an issue of some concern because of the way that different parties yeah. allocate speaking responsibilities and that in particular for, for our party the intention had been for this debate uh, f for me as the spokesperson uh, to take several calls to uh, make our contributions. I draw your attention, sir, to uh, Standing Order 103 and factors to be taken into account by the look, Speaker. Uh, I look, um, to the member, I hear what the member says. We've, we've had this um, uh, discussion on previous bills. Um, I made it clear at the beginning, because uh, this debate, and it's on, um, uh, it's one question over uh, 6 to 10, and then the clauses 1 and 2, that it's a wide-ranging debate on that, that, those sections, but because it's going to be time-limited to quarter past five, that in fairness to give everyone an opportunity who wants to speak, I was taking one call only unless when we've exhausted calls and there are other members who want to take a call, now it could well be then that a person like yourself, who was the only spokesman for your party, may then wish to take another call and that would be acceptable. But my ruling at the moment is that it's going to be one call per person so that everybody who has the opportunity can have their say and if time permits, we can then allow a second call. So, uh, as, a, as a chair, that's my ruling, and that's how I intend to proceed. Uh, speaking to the point of order, Mr Chair... Yeah, Honourable Kevin, the, the, uh, Kevin the, Hay... The, uh, the, the, the reason that I drew your attention to Standing Order 103 is that at 103B, uh, the, 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 the Speaker, and I, I um, take, of course, the, the, you, that uh, in this debate you are the Chair of the sure. Committee of the Whole House. Yeah. Look, I have, I have 103 um, in front of me. There is, no f there is no formula as to the allocation of speaking spots. This is a... Uh, um, the, the ruling here is a 103 is a guide. Is a guide. There is no formula, and I have ruled as the chairman of the committee is that we're going to proceed along these lines, and possibly there will be an opportunity for the members, the sole spokesman for, uh, for his party, to be able to get another call, or maybe more than that. But in the first instance, I'm only accepting one call per person. I'm calling Dr Cam Calder. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. And, and uh, I'd like to make the point in the face of the posturing of the previous speaker that this government is making the first significant pushback in decades on the creeping liberalisation of laws surrounding alcohol. Now, many of us, many of us in society enjoy the occasional tincture, a tipple or a wee dram. But the dark side of this debate is that alcohol misuse contributes directly to around 1,000 deaths a year and is estimated to cost society about $5 billion annually. We know, we know it's a major driver of crime. As I've observed in this House before, alcohol is implicated in 30% of all police offences, 34% of family violence and 50% of homicide. This bill, Mr Chairman, is the first step at reducing alcohol-related harm. I'd like to point out some key features of this package of particular re relevance to the people of the vibrant and diverse community of Manurea where I have my office is that this bill will empower them to create their own local alcohol plan. Their own local alcohol plan. So councils will be able to develop local alcohol policies to determine trading hours, trading hours of licensed premises to limit location and control the density of licences and impose conditions on licensed premises. When forming local alcohol plans, councils can take into account the proximity of schools and early childhood centres or other community assets such as parks. The bill also broadens the matters that must be considered in granting a licence. Consideration must be given to such things as the object of the law, 
the provisions of the aforementioned local alcohol plan and whether the facility or good order of the area would be reduced if a licence is granted. The bill widens the definition of public place in liquor bans to include car parks, school grounds and other private spaces to which the public has access. It also makes it an offence to promote alcohol in a way that has special appeal to people under the purchase age. These changes will apply to any promotion, including TV advertising and billboards. Another key feature, which is, as a parent, I heartily endorse, is that the bill makes it an offence for anyone other than a parent or a guardian to provide alcohol, even in a private home, to a person under the age of 18 years of age without the consent of the parent or the guardian. An important sequelae to that is that where alcohol is provided, including by a person under the age of 18, to a person under the age of 18 years of age, by a parent or guardian or an authorised person, that that authorised person, parent or guardian, will need to ensure the alcohol is supplied in a reasonable manner. Now, I just want to touch briefly on the RTD issue, uh, which is an important one. And we have a regulation making power in this bill to enable us to restrict RTDs at any time in the future. This sends a very strong signal to the industry that they must take action to reduce the known harm of these so-called alco pops. The industry has already offered to put in place a voluntary code on our RTDs and they are currently working on a proposal. We believe this approach is flexible and workable and will reduce the risk of new products being developed to circumvent restrictions. If the industry measures are ineffective or not strong enough, we can and we will take action. We can impose restrictions without needing further legislation. This is a strong signal to the industry we are serious about reducing harm from RTDs. I commend this bill to the House. Um, I call Dennis O'Rourke. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Firstly, regarding uh, Phil Goff's SOP 12.